Welcome back again to another lecture wrap-up uh, video for Engineering 17, Section 2 here at UC Davis, spring quarter of 2014. Today, this is a wrap-up video for lecture number 6. Uh, okay, so to cover the basic topics of what we went over today, talk about feminine equivalent circuits uh, and how we can come up with finding uh, a given series, uh, uh, feminine voltage in series with a feminine resistance uh, to simplify a circuit you know, even as complex as this one, which we'll go through an example uh, here in this video. Uh, and then talk about the Norton equivalent circuit. Again, that's more or less just a source transformation from whatever your Thevenin equivalent uh, circuit would look like. And again, there might be some benefit as you're simplifying a larger circuit for you to have the Norton equivalent uh, compared to the Thevenin equivalent. Let's talk about max power. And again, remember the main point from the, the max power discussion was that in order for, to get maximum power transfer, um, the load that you want to have needs to be equivalent in, in its resistance to whatever the feminine equivalent resistance is. So again, if maybe I have this circuit and I would uh, go through finding the equivalent uh, feminine equivalent resistance, and then if I applied a load across these two terminals, A, B, I would want that load to have that same, same value of resistance as whatever my feminine resistance is that would allow me to deliver the maximum amount of power to that load. Uh, and then the last topic of discussion was talking about superposition. So again, this was the case where if you have independent sources in your circuit, then you're able to superimpose the effects that each one of these given sources has on, on any given circuit element and uh, look at them individually and then simply add those, uh, the response of your circuit to just one single source at a time. And again, that might have some benefit and helping you kind of work through things a little bit more simply than uh, having to deal with multiple sources at different parts of your circuit. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so this is an example I want to go through again to, for finding feminine equivalent resistance. The difference in this particular example, which is different from what we did in class, is the fact that I now have a dependent source up here. So this is a, a voltage dependent voltage source, uh, two times whatever V sub X is, and V sub X is to find the as the voltage drop across this four ohm resistor here. And then I additionally have this um, independent current source sitting over here as well. Okay, so again, first thing we want to do in thinking about the Thevenin equivalent resistance between terminals A and B is what we can do is we can uh, remove or disconnect this current source. Again, this was the fact that we talked about deactivating a given source, but only applies to independent sources here. We still need to kind of keep the uh, dependent source in, in, in the scheme of things because this is depending on something else that's happening in, in the circuit. But for a current source, we simply uh, disconnect it. So this is more or less an open circuit. If this were a, a voltage source, a voltage source rather than a current source, we would simply put a short circuit across that voltage source. Okay, so now we are, what we want to do is write out some equations in order to solve for what the equivalent resistance would be as seen between terminals A and B. So if we didn't have this dependent voltage source sitting up here, it'd be relatively straightforward because we would just have a network of resistors and we'd use standard serials, series and parallel combination rules to get us down to an equivalent resistance. However, because that is there, we have to do the, the slightly alternate approach and that is to use uh, what's called like a, a test voltage. So imagine that we're gonna put a test voltage um, V0 here between terminals A and B, and then from this source we're going to be delivering a given current, uh, which I'll say is I sub Z, so I naught or I sub zero. Um, now we want to go ahead and define what this voltage is just to make our life a little bit simpler as we're working through the actual solution. So in this case, I'm going to say that that this test potential is going to be equal to one volt. And so again, now if I, I've defined one volt, and so therefore my Thevenin, Thevenin equivalent resistance is simply going to be equal to that one volt over whatever my this I naught term ends up being. So, so we now need to solve this circuit to figure out what I naught would be, and then that would allow us to come up with an, a Thevenin equivalent resistance uh, by that means. Okay, and then now to find what the current is, this current I naught is from our test source um, sitting over here between terminals A and B, I'm going to use the mesh current analysis. So again, defining some given 
mesh currents, it's going to be I1. This one will be I2. And then similarly around this loop, this mesh will be I3. So again, we can think about writing our, our uh, equations that will allow us to describe what's happening there. So in looking at uh, the mesh one up here, we have minus two V sub X plus two I one minus I two equals zero. Uh, so again, here we're talking about the voltage drop across this dependent source, which is this two V X. And the reason this is minus is because of how I define the direction of my mesh current I one is actually going into my the negative terminal of this source, so it's a voltage a voltage rise, so that's a negative quantity. Uh, plus two times the the uh, the drop here is is uh, from I one. I'm sorry, we have the I one mesh current, but then the I two is counteracting it because it's going in the opposite direction. So we have the I one minus I two that all sums to zero. And I can simplify this just to say that V X is going to be equal to I one minus I two. Just by simplifying this expression, we can come up with this. Um, but we know what this VX is here in relationship to this four ohm resistor since that's where it's defined in the circuit. And so in this case, VX is equal to four, minus four um, I two. So this mesh current I two is the only mesh current that's affecting what's happening through this four ohm resistor. And again, it's, it's a negative quantity with relationship to VX because of the how the polarity is defined here. Um, so we could then uh, eliminate this unknown VX such that um, we just come up with I1 is equal to minus 3 I2 by combining these two expressions into this one down here. So that's one of our main equations. Okay, so now we still need to write our uh, mesh current equations for uh, I2 and I3 here. So that would be starting with uh, this mesh here with I2 in it, that'll be 4I2 plus, uh, sorry, let me start this a little bit over here, 4I2 plus 2 by I2 minus I1 plus 6 by I2 minus I3, all equal to zero. So again, that's just working around this loop, and again, uh, summing together the appropriate mesh currents across the 2 ohm uh, resistor as well as the 6 ohm resistor there. And then looking around this loop here with that test source, I will have 4, uh, sorry, right, same one there, 6 by I3 minus I2 plus 2 by I3 plus 1 equals 0. <coughs> Okay, so again, this is describing here, and this plus one, again, is the fact that this is a voltage drop of one volt as I've defined it, and that's, I've, I've just chosen one volt uh, because I will kind of make things a little bit simpler in solving things, but you could put in any, any uh, other voltage you wanted to, as long as you keep that in mind for coming up with your Thevenin resistance, as we discussed there. Okay, so then moving on, we want to get to um, ultimately, again, figuring out what the, this I0 current is up to this branch. So if you take these three equations, you could solve them, and that would give you up with uh, I3 is equal to minus one sixth of an amp, just by solving these equations that we have here. And I really only like, care about I3 in this case, because of the fact that I know that I3, or I, I0 that I'm looking for, is simply uh, negative of whatever I3 is here. So I0 is, one sixth of an amp, which means again, so my Thevenin resistance is going to be RTH equals six ohms. And so therefore we've now been able to come up with the Thevenin equivalent resistance using this test source uh, by describing what the current is from this test source in relationship to the voltage that we define as being one volt in solving all of our equations. And uh, that allowed us to come up with the Thevenin equivalent resistance. Okay, bam, do a little uh, camera magic. Right now, the same circuit that we originally started with, 
So in order to, we need to get to what the Thevenin equivalent voltage is because we already came up with the Thevenin equivalent resistance of six ohms by all the equations that we just did. So I wiped all that off. You just have that, which we know we now need to get the Thevenin equivalent uh, voltage. So what we're looking for here is to basically sort of determine what this open circuit voltage is again between A and B. And so again, we're gonna, we can do mesh current analysis to figure out what that potential would be across those two terminals. So here I can define um, I1 through around this branch or around this mesh, I mean I2 here and I'll say I3 here. Of course, there's not gonna be current, any current traveling through this branch or through this mesh, I'm sorry, uh, which isn't really a mesh because we don't have a, a, a short here between A and B. So there's no, gonna be no current flow as we had mentioned in class as well. And then we can write equations again for each mesh, which I'll just go through this, so I1, I1 here in this case is simply going to be equal to 5 amps because there's nothing else affecting or uh, yeah, coming into play with this independent source. So we know, we know that right off the bat. Um, then we could look at mesh 2 here. That should give us minus 2 V sub X plus 2 by I3 minus I2 equals 0. That would be us one equation. Then looking at uh, mesh 3 up here, should give us 4 by I2 minus I1 plus 2 by I2 minus I3 uh, plus 6 I2 equals 0 there. Right. Okay. So and actually, I, I think I mixed these up. So this equation here is for the mesh uh, 3 up here, and this equation is for uh, mesh 2. So again, now we, we could simplify these, we reduce these, but again, we still have this Vx, so we need to describe that in terms of the mesh currents. Um, so in this case, the Vx is, would be equal to four by I1 minus I2. So that, that's all the equations that we would need to uh, then solve the entire uh, problem, or uh, solve for all the mesh currents. Uh, we'd eventually come up with I2 being equal to 10 over 3 amps. And then from there we know that uh, the feminine equivalent voltage is going to be equal to the VOC, which happens to be equal to 6 times I2, which is equal to 20 volts. So from here, what I was able to do is say that the potential across this uh, terminals A and B is equivalent to the potential drop across the 6 ohm resistor here. Again, that's because of the fact there's no current traveling through this resistor here, therefore there's no voltage drop across that resistor, and so we're simply looking at uh, the voltage drop across our resistor, our 6 ohm resistor is 6 times I2, because that's the only mesh current that's uh, flowing through that particular resistor. Uh, that gives us the equivalent voltage of 20 ohms, and finally if I have enough room, uh, so again we would just write that as our 20 volt source in series with our six ohm resistor as such. That would be our Thevenin equivalent um, circuit. And again, we could transform this then into the Norton equivalent by doing a source transformation uh, into a, a uh, current source in parallel with the same resistor value as well. So that's our final example here for uh, Thevenin equivalent resistance, and again, this. This material is what wraps up what we're going to be covering on the first midterm, which is next week. Hope we'll be ready for that. Uh, have a good weekend. See you next week. Stay classy.